morning, good morning. We are glad that you are here this morning and that you were not so exhausted from celebrating Christmas yesterday and Christ's birthday that you forgot to come today and to worship him. So we're glad that you are here to worship Christ because truly it's not just that we worship him for Christmas, it's every day. And every day we have victory in Jesus and every day he is mighty to save and every day his, our chains are set free because of him, amen? So let's sing about this victory that we have in Jesus. Because he set me free. 
because of his amazing grace, because he is the greatest gift that gift could ever be given. And his love, his grace, set me free from the change that I had. Let's sing about his amazing grace.
refer people to every Sunday. That's because it's a way to give information about yourself, especially if you're online. We welcome you to the online service. And, and um, on your Facebook Live, there's a link that you can click to take you directly to the online Connect card. So if you want to let us know that you're here, that's a way that you can do that is through the Connect card. It's also a way that you can share um, if you're interested in different ministries or different programs that are going on at the church. But most importantly, it's a prayer request card. And so on the back, there's an opportunity that you can put your prayer request there. And we would be honored and privileged to pray with you and for you because we know that going into a new year, and even as much as we are looking forward to 2022, amen, amen. still we know that we carry burdens with us to that new year. And we want to be able to pray with and for people. So if you have a request that you would like for us to pray with you, we would be honored and, and privileged to do that and would encourage you to fill those out, whether online or here in person, and put it in the, um, the offering plate as you go out this, this morning. Also, another thing we would um, encourage you to do is to get your smartphones out and to like the video and to share the video, to comment even during the service, that would be fine. Um, it's, you know, when I was growing up, and um, all the teenagers would kind of sit in the back seat, or, at least in, my, in, in our church. My dad was up here preaching because I was a preacher's kid. And we used to pass notes. Well, now I'm encouraging you to do it on your smartphone as you watch the video because it's a way to engage with people who are online that can't be here in person. So feel free to do that, to share the video, to like the video, because it is a way for people to see the service and to hear about the precious gift that we have in Jesus. So let's pray before Pastor Will comes up and, and shares what God has laid on his heart this morning. God, we thank you so much for this day for an opportunity to be in your presence and to worship you. And truly, yesterday was a wonderful day to celebrate and, and to be with family and to eat a lot of stuff and to get presents. And what a great day, Lord God. But the thing that makes it great is you. If you weren't in the center of it, it would just be kind of a day of selfishness, quite honestly. So, Lord, we come before you this morning on this day after Christmas, remembering that we need to worship you and to make that a priority first and foremost in our lives. Because it's not about the special holidays, it's not about the special times as much as how it is special every single day because we know you as our Lord and Savior. Lord, for those who are listening, and they don't know you maybe as their Lord and Savior. Not many things feel special, special at all, Lord. God, I pray that they might know the specialness of who they are, who you created them to be, and how you want to fill their hearts, fill their lives in such a way that they might know who they are in you, that they are beloved, that they are your son or your daughter, that they are chosen and highly favored, that they the one that you gave your life for, that you came for to, to be with, to dwell with, to have a relationship with, that they might know you as friend and Savior, Messiah and Lord. Because truly there is nothing more special than that. And most of us have many roles, whether it's mother or father or sister or brother or, or a parent or whatever it might be. We have a lot of roles, but the best title that we have, the best role that we can be, is a child of God. That's the role of it. That's the title. That's the who we are that forms everything else and that provides such grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace that you extended to us, that you would come to be with us. So, Lord Jesus, in these moments, as we continue to listen from your word, that we would hear and not just be hearers, but to be doers, Lord God, that we would have it fill our hearts and affect our hands and our feet and our minds and what we do and what we say, our tongues, Lord God. That you would truly be with us. And we would not just talk about that at Christmas, but every day, because you sent your Holy Spirit to be with us every day. And thank you that you are our counselor and our friend and our guide, our all in all, our everything. Thank you for your precious gift of always being with us. So, Lord, we come before you knowing that because you're with us, we are here to adore you. We've come to adore you. We've come to learn and to sit at your feet, to hear your word, 
so that we might be transformed and changed. And Lord, we know that there are people who would love to be here who are in pains, and so Lord, we pray for their physical health, we pray for their um, mental health, we pray for their emotional health, whatever it might be, Lord God, as people are struggling today. And we know there are many. Lord, for your healing, for your touch, for your mercy and your grace upon our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And as Pastor Will comes up, that, Lord, you would speak through him, that we would hear well, and that we would respond well. So that we would be the people, the children of God that he wants to be. And to live the example in front of others that he wants to live. We pray in your name, because we love you. We adore you. And we pray with the power of your blood, because we know that your blood is more powerful than anything. And so as it covers us, we know that we can tap into that power. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has laid unto us. Let us rejoice and be glad and it. Are you happy to be here this morning? Yes. Let me ask you again. Are you happy to be here this morning? Yeah, my son, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. Amen? There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is no better place to be on a Sunday morning apart from being in the house of the Lord. There is joy this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, pray that the Lord will bless us this morning as we share together his word. Um, as we uh, get started, shall we stand? Uh, please stand and uh, turn your Bible to James, the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. Will be up there too. Let us read it together. Don't be deceived, my dear. But as a every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like a shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth to the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, Lord. Speak through me that your word may be heard this morning. And this is not gonna be done by mind or by power, but by your spirit, thus said the Lord. Have your will, Lord, this morning. Is there, is there any spirit in here that is not yours, Father? We pray in the name of your son, Jesus. We cast that spirit out and we claim your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over this room, even now, in the name of your son, Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the church say, Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to share with you this morning on the topic, the perfect gift from God. The perfect gift from God. Jesus is a perfect gift from God that we need to cherish, not only on special occasions, but also at all times, amen? Not only on Christmas, and not only on Easter, but also at all times. When it comes to cherishing Jesus, God's perfect gift to us, there are three different kind of reactions God usually receives from people. The first reaction is that people will accept the gift from God and cherish it. They appreciate it. They love the Lord and put their whole heart into the service. 
They are committed to sharing the love of Jesus with others at all times, not in, in this, on a special occasion. The second reaction is that people will accept the gift from God, but not cherish it, not appreciate it for some reason. It's like they have never opened the gift. They keep the gift of Jesus in a box. How can you appreciate a gift if you don't first open it to find out what it is? It is impossible. And the third reaction God usually gets from people is that they will reject his precious gift and continue to live and die in their sins, which disappoints him very much. Let me ask you all. Let me ask you all of this question, these questions as we are talking about the perfect gift from God this morning. For those of you who received gifts for Christmas this year, how did you feel about your Christmas gifts when you opened them? Don't look at anybody, just look at me straight. You know, how did, how did you how did, how did you how did you feel about your Christmas gifts when you opened them? Did you like them all? Just look at me straight. Don't look, don't look at anybody. <laughs> did you like them all? Yes. Or were there, were there a few that you fib about when you said thank you to the giver? Were there, were there some you wanted to take back and exchange for something else? Look at me. Look at me straight. You know, don't look at anybody. <laughs> were there some that did not fit you? <laughs> no. I probably am not going to go there. I had myself in the <laughs> before Christmas, okay? It was, you know, I, I'm not gonna go there, okay? okay? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. So the problem is that some of what you received were not as appreciated as other gifts, you know? Oh, did anybody refuse any Christmas gifts here this morning? Let's, let me see your hands. No, no, I hope not. But 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 the perfect gift that we are going to talk about this morning is completely different from all the gifts we put under the trees during Christmas. It is God's only Son given to us for the purpose of bringing us back to Him. The perfect gift from, gift from God isn't on the tree at home. You will not find that perfect gift on the tree at home. It is the ultimate gift that God sent to show his love for us. The gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. What is your reaction to God's gift this morning? I know you got some gifts for Christmas. Now we're talking about God's gift right now. What, what is your reaction to God's gift this morning? Imagine, just imagine, you know, close your eyes, imagine. Imagine for a second that you really want to show Pastor Will that you love me. So you sell your house, your car, and basically everything you have to buy a Christmas gift for me because you love me. When the time comes for you to present this incredible gift to me, I said, oh, that is really sweet of you, but I really could not take this. How would you feel? Let's think about it. How would you feel? You gave up everything to give me this gift because you want to show your love to me. And my response is no thank you. I really can't accept it. Oh, it's so nice of you, I appreciate it, but no. You would, you would be totally offended, wouldn't you? I would. In the same way, God comes to us and says, I love you so much. I sent my son to die for you 
so that you could be forgiven of all your sins. It's my gift to you. Don't worry about paying me for that. You don't have to pay anything for that. It's my free gift to you. Yet some people basically say, no, thank you. I'm all set. I'm not ready for that right now. I'm passing that one. Thank you. God has a gift for you, and he purchased it at a great cost. He is offer, offering you the gift of eternal life, the most precious gift bought for you by Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus purchased the, this gift with his own blood. You can never afford it, you, and you can never pay him back. He paid it all for you. And the best thing we can do is to simply say, thank you, Lord, I receive your gift, and we'll always cherish it to glorify your name. The big question for us this morning is, why should we cherish this perfect gift at all times? Why? Two reasons for cherishing this perfect gift at all times, I'm going to share with you quickly. Reason number one for cherishing this perfect gift from God at all times is that the gift of Jesus is a demonstration of God's unending love toward us. God eternal love. Scripture tells us in Romans 9, 39, Romans 8, 39 that neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. God's eternal love for us is so strong that even death cannot separate us from that love. Even when we die, that love will be still with us. Amen? His love Motivate him, motivated him to give up his son for us. Love. That's why we can celebrate Christmas now. Amen? Christmas is about God's love demonstrating to us through the miracles of the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the reason for Christmas. Christmas is a time when we all should express our love for God because he has expressed his love for us in the gift of his son, Jesus. We love God because he first loved us. The love of Jesus Christ is the most precious gift we can ever receive. It is the very reason we celebrate Christmas. His love is what Christmas is all about. All the hope, peace, and joy we seek so lovingly during this time of the year is found in Him and in Him alone. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not want any of His children to perish. No, none of us. Because the Bible says in, in, the, in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's the gift we're talking about this morning. The gift of eternal life. His perfect love is eternal. A love that will never let us go even when we die. A love that came to earth for us died on the cross for us and poured out its, all its blood for us. God loves us more than we can ever imagine. He loves us so much that he gave up everything to come to earth. The love that motivated him to give up his son for us. His love brought him to this earth to live among us for a while so he could show us the way to eternal life. Just the right time when we were still hopeless and powerless, his love broke through and gave us the hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. Scripture tells us in Romans 5, verses 8 through verses 6 through 8. You see, 
At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That love is the greatest gift of all. Amen? His love also brought us peace in the midst of chaos. Jesus Christ is God's perfect gift because he is the prince of peace. Only him can remove your sin and guilt and bring, and bring peace to you. We cannot know peace if we don't know Christ, the prince of peace. It is important to get to know Jesus personally if you want to have peace with God. Because when sin separated us from God after the fall of men, you all know that, no one could have peace because of the broken relationship we had with God. The world was upside down. Everyone was living in darkness and confusion. The, 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 the fall of man caused us to live in a chaotic environment. We had a debt to pay to God for our sins. We had no peace because we did not even know all we would pay for our sins. But Jesus came to reconcile us to God by paying the debt for us with his own life and, and with his own blood by bringing peace. To bring peace to the world. He died as an atonement for our sins, leaving us no more debt to pay. He paid it all for us to bring peace to us. That's what makes him a perfect gift from God. Amen? He paid it all for us. We have nothing else to pay. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6, surely it took of, he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Jesus. We are to cherish Jesus as God's perfect gift to us because he brought us peace in the midst of chaos. He suffered for our sins, bearing our sin to make us acceptable before God. No one else could do that, only Jesus. You see, in a time of great darkness, confusion, separation, desperation, and chaos, Christ came to bring light, clarity, reconciliation, hope, joy, and peace to us. Who else could do that for us? Praise God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give him some praise this morning. Give him a 10 second praise this morning. For Jesus this morning. Praise God for Jesus this morning. God is ready to change your life today. What is your response this morning to his gift? What is your response this morning to his gift? Are you willing to accept Jesus as the greatest gift, gift you will ever receive? So, so you might have eternal life. Jesus said in, uh, in John 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Receive Christ today and you will live an abundant and peaceful life. Peaceful life. 2020, 2020, uh, 2022 will be a new beginning for you. Will you start over again today with Jesus? It's never too late to receive the gift of salvation. Reason number two for cherishing the perfect gift from God at, at all times is that the gift of Jesus is a demonstration, demonstration of God's undeserved grace for us. We are saved by his grace. Amen? 
What is grace? What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. It is God giving us something we don't deserve. It is a gift from God. When Jesus died on the cross, God gave each person grace. But this is that that that, that is not enough. We also need to have faith because it is impossible to please God without faith. What is faith? What is faith? Faith is our response to God's grace. Amen? Amen? Amen. Faith is our response to God's grace. It is receiving Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior by trusting in Him alone for salvation. So we are saved by grace through faith, as Paul said in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, for it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Grace. We need to trust in Jesus. It is not by works that we are saved. It is by having faith in Jesus Christ. Grace is a gift from God, but we need to first receive the gift by putting our trust in Jesus so we can be saved. Paul wants us to know that salvation is a gift from God, and we are saved by grace through faith. We cannot buy or earn it regardless of how much work we do for God. We can earn that. It is the grace of God. It was bought by Christ Jesus on the cross. God's grace is greater than all our sins. Do you believe that this morning? God's grace is greater than all our sins. The Bible says in Romans 5, 20, B, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Amen? All the more. It is only through Christ Jesus that we have salvation. It is made up of God's grace and our faith in him that we can receive salvation. Paul knew what he was talking about. Grace is not enough. Grace is the gift. But we need to receive the gift. Amen? We need to receive the gift through faith so that we can be saved. We are living through His mercy. We are living through God's mercy. Being saved by God's grace and living through his mercy means that God gave us his son to meet a permanent fix, not a temporary fix. And so grace without mercy would not work well for us simply because we are not a perfect people. That's why God is being compassionate and gracious to us every day. Every day. He understands, he understands we are sinful people. He deals with us not according to what we deserve, but according to his mercy. We need God's mercies to live every day, and his mercies are sufficient for our daily needs. His compassion is new every morning. His faithfulness reaches to the heavens, and his forgiveness is without measure. Our God is rich in mercy, and he has this great love for us. Lamentation 3, 22 and 23 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Friends, 
If it were not for God's mercies, none of us would be here today. Amen? Would you say that to that? None of us would be here today. Mercy is cutting me some slack when I should be punished. It's giving me a second chance to leave when I deserve death. Jesus did something for us on the cross that is similar to what a judge did for a woman who committed a crime and was found guilty. A woman was arrested for stealing a bottle of milk in order to feed her hungry child. When the prosecuting attorney presented his evidence in court, the judge had no other alternative than to find the poor woman guilty as charged. Because of the mitigating circumstances, the judge, the judge imposes the minimum sentence a $5 fine. However, a woman who can't even afford to buy a bottle of milk for her hungry baby can, cannot even pay such a small fine, $5. The judge is a kind and caring, a caring very caring man. But how shall he maintain respect for the law and show mercy to the woman at the same time. Well, the judge resolves the dilemma by pulling, up, by pulling out his wallet and paying the $5 fine for the woman and setting her free. The judge showed mercy to the woman. Something like that happened when Jesus went to the cross. We have been indicted for our sins and found guilty as charged. The penalty, the penalty is death, and Jesus paid the death for us to give us life instead. Just as the woman, we certainly could not afford to pay for our sins, but Jesus had mercy on us and gave us the grace to set us free. He paid it all for us. The sun is worth in Psalm 103 verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. Some versions said abounding in love. Reason number three for cherishing the perfect gift from God at all times is that the gift of Jesus is a demonstration of God's ultimate truth to set us free from our sins. God's ultimate truth to set us free from our sins. Christ is the only truth to set us free. He is the ultimate truth, the perfect gift from God himself that frees people from the consequences of sin and gives both grace and mercy. The perfect truth of God is revealed to us through the teaching of Jesus Christ so we can have a deeper knowledge of him as his disciples. So Jesus said in John 8, 31, 32, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We are in desperate need in all day for the truth. Because people can take the truth and twist it into making something other than what it really is. Even though the truth is very clear in the Bible, if they don't like it, then they are not only rejecting it, but also trying to change it into heresy. For instance, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of truth. People hear it, but instead of accepting it as the ultimate truth to set them free, they reject it and turn it into a heresy. Because they don't want to accept it. Here is the truth about Jesus Christ that people need to know and accept it as the maxim to live. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God's perfect gift is the divinely appointed mediator between God and man. 
He conquered death and the grave and lives eternally that he might be the savior of all who come to God through him. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the door. We live in a world where many, many other Jews may sound good and be taught by many false teachers to lead people astray, but the only one truth that sets people free is Jesus, the eternal truth, the author of Christmas, the reason for this season and all seasons. Jesus is the truth of all seasons. Not only Christmas, he needs to be given attention in all the seasons as well. Jesus, the perfect gift from God, the ultimate truth of God, is not to be treated as mere Christmas decoration, and after Christmas, you put him in a box until Christmas again. He deserves to be cherished at all times because of who he is and what he has done for us. Jesus has done a lot for us, friends. Where would we be right now without Jesus? Jesus accepted our punishment, paid the price, paid the price for our sins, and he offered us the new life that he had bought for us. Therefore, we cannot place the truth in a box and hide it. We have to live the truth every day and embrace it as the foundation of our Christian life. Let us continue to make Jesus the truth of our life, the only truth. Let us let our lives be consumed by the living truth of the living word of God, Jesus Christ, the newborn king, the Messiah, the one who makes this life possible for us. Jesus is the author of faith, author of salvation, the author of life. What do you want to do with him this morning? Christ may come back at any time. Are you ready for his return this morning? The God of the universe reaches out to his people in love and provides a way for us to be united with him. The way is through his son Jesus Christ. The only way, the only truth, and the only life. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 4 verse 12 tells us salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. He is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And so accepting Jesus as God's perfect gift is what will give you a true purpose for your life. Sometimes we spend almost half of our lives doing what life demands of us. We spend a lot of time responding to what life did to us, responding to bad choices, bad situations, bad relationships, and bad experiences, instead of trying to find our God-given purpose through Jesus Christ alone. As we, as we enter 2022, we need to stop and think, how can we be more productive and effective in living our lives? We need to find, find, find our purpose in Christ Jesus by receiving him as the greatest gift to ensure our eternity. There is no eternity without Christ. Because he gave, he gave purpose in life, and what we do about that purpose will largely determine the advancement of the kingdom of God on earth. More than this, it will determine the eternal destiny of our souls. We have, we have a soul. We have a soul. Therefore, Christ is all that you need to make a, different, a difference in your life. You can try everything else. But this morning, God sent me here to tell you that Christ is all that you need to make a difference. A difference in your life. You can't change your past, but you can determine your destiny by receiving Christ. 
But Christ can change your past and prepare you for eternity. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. He died on the cross so that all the sins you've ever committed, all the things you've ever done wrong are forgiven. What do you need to do this morning? You need to repent of your sins. That means to be willing to change your way of living. You may have no power to do it. You may not have the power to give up some of the habits you know are all wrong. You may not have the power to change your whole life that you know needs to be changed. But if you surrender your life to Christ, he will give you the power to be transformed. You might say, well, Pastor Will, I don't know what to do. I have been coming to church for a while. I have been in different life groups, and I do a lot for God. But, but I don't really have that peace and power in my life that the church is talking about. How do I get there? Thanks for asking. Paul said in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Turn to Christ today and he will give you a new strength, a new joy, a new peace, and a new purpose for living. Every person that ever lives has to make the same choice. Bring your life to Jesus, the one who gave it to you, and say, fix me, heal me, make me, and shape me, and take me just as I am. If you choose Christ today and allow God to do a new thing in your life, Christ will give you new joy, new peace, and new power. And it is an urgent decision because to delay makes the right decision harder. Don't delay. Indecision in itself is a choice because not to decide is to decide not to. If you have a ticket for a flight to California today and can't decide whether to go or not, if you wait past the departure time, guess what? The choice would have been made. The plane would take off without you. Decisions are made whether we make them or not. Time will decide if you would not. And time always decides against you. That's your decision about Christ this morning, to set yourself free. Your parents can't make it for you. Your boyfriends can't make it for you. Your girlfriends can't make it for you. Your church can't make it for you. You have to make it yourself. And you must decide today if you want to receive eternal life. Because today is the day of salvation. It's never too late to start over. If you are not happy with yesterday, you can always start over with Jesus today. God wants you to surrender all to him so he can take the bad and the ugly in you and use them in such a way to bring glory to his name. Regardless of what happened in your life today, yesterday, last week, or last year, every morning is a new opportunity to start over. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you have been, but because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross, you are eligible to start over again today. You don't need to do anything. Jesus already did everything for you. Would you come to Jesus now to start this new life? There is no life without Jesus. No life without Jesus. You can live for a long time without Jesus, but you can you cannot die without Jesus. Don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. That's why today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off until tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. 
Now is the time. You don't know if you, you don't know if you will make it tomorrow. Now. Now is the time. For God so loved the world. What he did? He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Would you try Jesus this morning? Let us stand. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you did not send your son to this world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. We thank you for giving us what we need. I just still like time. Not according to our wisdom, but according to your wisdom. Well, thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus. Lord, this, this morning, Lord, we just want to pray, Father, for those, Father, who received the great escape of salvation willingly. Those, Father, who received the gift and cherish it, Lord, and give their all to you, Father. We just want to bless these people this morning. We just want to Father, pray for them, Father. And call it their heart, Father, that they might, they might continue, Father, to serve you in love. Touch them, Father, even now, Father. Thank you, Lord, Father, for their faithfulness, Father. So, Lord, we also pray, Father, for, for those, Father, who receive the gift, Father, and put it in a box. Father, I pray, Father, that they will not treat you as a Christmas gift or as Christmas decorations. Put you in the box and then next year get the box out again, Lord. Lord, we pray for those people right now in the name of your son Jesus that you will touch them, Father. Touch them, Father. Even now, Father, touch them. Help them, Father, to remember that you gave it all for them. And that Father, they can they can they can they can return to you, Father, the commitment. Father, as a as a result of your love, even now, Jesus. Lord, we pray for those, Father, who rejected the gift. Even now. Pray for them, Father. That somehow, somewhere, Lord Father, your Holy Spirit will speak to them right now in the name of your son Jesus. That the Lord, Father, without Jesus, life is impossible. That they may, Father, reach out to you right now in the name of your son Jesus and accept you, Lord, as the Lord and Savior. Press them now, even now, Father. Bless your people this morning, Lord. Bless your church this morning, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord, Father in the lives of your people. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
all about the two life groups that we're offering. One is the men's group that will meet on Mondays. They're going to be going through the book of Philippians, looking at the joy that's found in Jesus. And then there's an emotionally healthy discipleship um, life group that we'll be meeting on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock that I'm going to be um, co-facilitating with Denise um, Dowdell. So there's um, sign-up sheets for that in the foyer. The Emotionally Healthy Discipleship is a little different than the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and the Emotionally Healthy Relationships that we've done. It's a different book. So if you've already done those life groups and you want to continue to learn some more and to dig in a little bit deeper, Emotionally Healthy Discipleship is the one that you can do. Or if you've not done either one of those, that's a good place to start as well. So again, those sign-up sheets are on the table in the foyer as well. Again, we are so glad that you were here this morning and that you are here to worship. Let's stand as we um, close our service in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray that we might never be people that box you up and keep you to ourselves. That we might never be people that say, thank you for this gift. I'm going to put it over here, and when I want you, Jesus, I'm going to let you out of the box. But when I don't, and I just want to live my life on my own, you're going to stay in that box. God, we thank you that you are a God who wants to be involved in every area. And that truly, when we let you out of the box and let you control and be involved in every aspect of our lives, then real life and life to the full happens. May it be so, we pray. And may we share that gift not just with ourselves, not just with those who we love a lot, but maybe share it with everyone so that you can be out of the box in the entire world. We pray in your name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace.